Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And as always, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are blessed that you can share this time with us, time in the Word. Amen. Time in the Word is time profitable, word. profitable time. Yes. Speaking of profitable, we're going to talk about prophets. We're in the prophet Amos, continuing on. And this, I believe, is our, our 13th session in the prophet Amos. And uh, we left off last week talking about all of the things that the Lord, in chapter 4, that the mm-hmm. Lord said that he had done to get the people to turn back to him and repent. Yes. Which they failed to, to do. do. As he said, yet you are not returned to me, declares the Lord. Over and over and over he said that. In spite of what he did to get their attention, he said, yet you have not returned to me. Um, This is a time that you want to be in the shelter of the Most High, in the shadow of the Almighty. This is a time, and I promise you that it's it's a downward spiral that this world is in. You want to be in the hands of the Almighty God. So... If you're not close to him, this is a great time to return to him. This is your opportunity. (laughs) Amen, and it is an opportunity. So we're gonna we're gonna pick up and uh, we're gonna get the last couple of verses in chapter four, Amos chapter four, that we had not done, and then pick up and uh, go to chapter five, Five. which is quite exciting. (laughs) Hallelujah! (laughs) But before we do that, Mark's gonna ask God's blessing upon our time together, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, oh Lord, we just thank you for your word, and it says in your word, where whenever two or three people are gathered in your name, you are there also. So, Lord, we just pray that you are here and that you give us what we need to get to change our lives for the better. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I don't know if I'm going to make our lives better. <laughs> Except for eternal lives. Yes. <laughs> eternal lives, yes. And he is in our midst, and I thank God for that. Amen. Um, I thank God for the presence of God. Yes. That's what we need to get through this this time in this world today, is the presence of God. Present. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So make sure you don't leave him or forsake him. That's right. So I want to have a start. Um, As I said, in in the last session, last week, we talked about all of the things that God did, Mm -hmm. right? All of the things that looked like and true adversity that God brought on his own people. And the purpose was to get them to turn to him, right? So I want to say this, and it it shouldn't be news to you, although it is truly good news, Mm -hmm. right? Paul wrote to the Philippians in Philippians 2.13 and said, For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. Whatever is going on in your life, Amen. trust that it's God who is at work in you. All right, But also trust that the word of God is true, pure, yes. holy, and true. Amen. So he's working for his good pleasure. <laughs> and while that should be pleasing to us, because whatever pleases him should please us. Absolutely, yeah. But sometimes you have to you have to take thoughts captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ to come to understand that. Because you know, Paul wrote to Timothy in Second Timothy, and he said, "Realize this: that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of pleasure. I'm, I'm skipping lovers of self, lovers of money." He goes on to say, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And then he goes on to say, in the fourth chapter of that second letter, Mm -hmm. for the time will come when they will not endure, they being the church, will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires for their pleasure. Right. Right? Now, I, I want to tell you, Alice and I do a, a morning Bible study. And we were talking, we're doing the letter of James, and we were talking the other day, and in James one twenty one, it says this, Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. 
if this if this is going to be a profitable time, a blessed time, where God can, who is the potter, can mold us and shape us more and more into the image of His Son. We have to receive His word in humility. Amen. See, if you're operating in pride, which is love of self, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You will test everything that you hear by what you already believe. Right. <laughs> if you're operating in humility, the love of God, you will test what you believe, what you hear, by His Word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's really a, an important distinction. Because the purpose of us being here in this study is for God to change us. He is, he is constantly bringing us from glory to glory, it says, at work in us to help us be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. Renewing of your mind, being transformed, that means you're being changed. Okay? We should always come away from this time thinking a little differently. Not, not that we're putting aside what we know to be true in the Word, but growing in the Word, all right? There's always more. There's always and, more. and if you are receiving this Word in humility, then you will hear the Word. Remember to all the, to the churches, in seven churches in the book of Revelation, they, they basically all end with God's Jesus saying to them, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You got to hear, okay? You have ears, but it says in Hebrews 5.14, you have to train your senses. You have to train your hearing. So, this is not, it's, while the word is profitable for correction, and it is, it's also there for him to work his plan in our lives, right? And it's not all necessarily about you. Mm -hmm. right? When the Lord sent his people into captivity in Babylon, and yes, it was him who did that, right? Yes. <clears throat> and told them to pray for its, it, its welfare. When he sent them into captivity, he said, when you go there, pray for their welfare. It's in his timing. Because in Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah was a prophet during that Babylonian captivity, right? Mm -hmm. I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you. For I know the plans I have for you, yes. declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. Regardless of what things look like, God is at work to bring about his plan, a plan for life, okay? For welfare, not for calamity. There are so many examples, and I'm not going to go into the net, but think about in Joseph being sold off into slavery in Egypt, how that was intended by God to be a blessing for his brothers. Think about Paul and Silas when they were thrown into jail in Philippi. How that turned out to be a blessing for the jailer. Mm -hmm. Think about when Paul was shipwrecked on his way being sent to prison in Rome and wound up shipwrecked on the island of Malta. All right? And there was revival on that island. People were healed and saved on that island. Yes. Okay? It wasn't about Paul. It was about those people God was sending because of God's compassion. All right, so now let's go back and just end the, the fourth chapter. Uh, Amos 4, 12, and 13. Alice, why don't you read those verses, okay. right? Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts, he who makes dawn into darkness and treads on the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. This is the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And he's saying to his people, because remember, they had refused to turn to him. He says, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. You want to know something? I, I pray that you're prepared to meet your God. Because we're all going to. Saint That's and right. sinner alike. That's right. The lost and the saved. We're all going to come into the presence of God. We're all going to meet him. Face and, to face. And either you're going to be prepared, prepared, or you're not. And you know, it, it says that it's appointed unto man to die once, and then the judgment. You're going to face judgment. Judgment for, for good, to receive the crown of life and glory, or judgment that I don't even want to think about. But it, that depends on what choices and what actions you've taken here on this planet before you go, all right? Not after you go. It's not about after, okay? There's, no, there's nothing in Scripture that indicates that once you die, then you get to make the choices. No, no. 
Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, it's hard and not your hearts, okay? All right, so now we're going to go into chapter 5. Amos chapter 5, talking about the adulterous virgin. Dun, dun, dun. That sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Amos 5, I'm going to read the first two verses. Hear this word which I take up for you as a dirge, O house of Israel. She has fallen, will not rise again, the virgin Israel. She lies neglected on her land. There is none to raise her up. A dirge. You know what a dirge is? A song? Oh, it is a song, but it's a particular kind of sorrowful one. No, it's a funeral song. A mourning. Funeral. I mean, that's a a dirge is is literally a funeral song, all right? In the King James, he calls it a lamentation. But But that's what it was. It was a funeral song, okay? As a matter of fact, in the dictionary, it says that a, a dirge is a funeral song or tune, one expressing mourning in commemoration of the dead. Any composition resembling such a song or tune in character as a poem or lament for the dead, or an, as an ecclesiastical, a churchy definition, it's a funeral service that is sung. Now, some of the mainline denominations, that's what they do. They, they sing a dirge at a funeral service. Mm-hmm. Okay, Our God, who, by the way, is life, who is the giver of life, who desires life for all, is now sitting Shiva over Israel. Mm. Ever hear that term? Yes. That's what the Jewish people do when somebody dies. Yes. They sit Shiva. And that's, they mourn, and they, they sing dirges and lamentations, okay? God is singing a dirge over Israel because Israel has died. Mm. Mm. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save. Neither is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah, by the way, is basically a contemporary of Amos. Isaiah was a little bit, maybe a a little bit after, but not much, after Amos. And of course, Isaiah is basically in the south, while Amos, from the south, is prophesying up in the north. Right. But the point is that the scripture makes clear, sin separates you from God. And that is death. Now, if you don't understand that, think about this. Ponder this. Have conversations with the Lord God Almighty about this. God said to Adam and the woman, the day that you eat from that tree that he was holding not to eat from, that day you shall die. They ate, and he cast them out of that garden that day. They were separated. And they were separated from God. Well, they, they lived. They kept walking about the earth. For a long, long time afterwards, but they were the walking dead. That's right. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, who is life, you're the walking dead. Mm-hmm. All right? What you see, all the nonsense that you see in the media, in television, in movies about the walking dead, that is Satan's imitation of a, a terrible, a terrible truth, okay? That you can be dead and yet walking, all right? Jesus is life. Amos 5 3 says this. For thus says the Lord God, the city which goes forth a thousand strong will have a hundred left. And the one which goes forth a hundred strong will have ten left to the house of Israel. He is talking about what he is going to bring down on Israel. He said, you know, when when he, and it was Assyria, that was the tool of God, came down on Israel, they would send out an army with a thousand and only a hundred would return. They'd send out a hundred and only 10 would be left. Mm. Does that sound like a remnant? Yes, it does. <laughs> a tenth? Very interesting. It is very interesting. Because in the last days, there will be a remnant, remnant. of yes. God's people. All right? Yes. But there will be a remnant left because the Lord makes a way to life. He is a God of resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in the fourth verse, For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me that you may live. There is a path to life. Seek me that you may live. Again, let me go back to Isaiah. 
right? And in Isaiah 55, he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I, that's Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. So, you see, what God was saying to Amos, to the people of Israel, was you haven't returned. I did this and you haven't returned. What Isaiah is still say, saying is, still, there's a chance. Return to him. You see, because God has made a way. Jesus came and said, I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. John 10, 10. Jesus is a way. Now, you may have heard this before. I, I, I pray. I, okay, you may have heard this before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. There is a way. And the way is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the only way. The only, way. the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The only way to life, to share in his resurrection. And then, in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul wrote, But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. You see, so even if you're dead, God is a God of resurrection. God has made a way. What was the way? Jesus is the way, right? He makes a way, he is the way, but it has to be his way. Only his way. You can't make up your own way to do that. Which is why in the next verse, in Amos 5.5, 5, God speaks to the prophet to say to them, but do not resort to Bethel, do not come to Gilgal, nor cross over to Beersheba, for Gilgal will certainly go into captivity and Bethel will come to trouble. When you're trying to figure it your way and do it your way, not only will they come into trouble, you will come into trouble, and you don't want to be in that trouble when you meet your maker. I got a question. Those three places in the Old Testament, in First and Se in First and Second Kings, and in other places, they said, and they did not get rid of the high places. Are those, are the those high places. considered the high places? Yeah, they are. They are. They are the places that they. And we talked about this, I think, last week or the week before. These are the places where where Israel now separated from Jerusalem and the temple, where they set up their own places of worship because they because of political reasons. Because they didn't want to go down to Jerusalem. They didn't want, because they were divided from their brethren down in the south and wanted to stay divided from their brethren. This is what division does to you. Division kills, all right? It's death and, and separation. And a house and divided will not fall. stand. And division also changes the word. Well, it doesn't change the word, but you start no, yeah, to, to, right. get to, to separate you from the word. Yeah. yeah. So, let me, let me go back. To, uh, David, you can't make your own religion, right? Yeah. Think about these words. And this is Old Testament, okay? People seem to think that the Old Testament is all about this, that kind of religion. David was a man after God's own heart. And here's what David said. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of thy righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare thy praise. For thou dost not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. Thou art not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Psalm 51, verses 14 through 17. It's not any different today. God is looking. He searches the heart. Yes. Man judges by outward appearance, but God searches the heart. It has always been a case of God's way versus self-made religion. All right? I mean, in the garden, what do you think the serpent was trying to say to the woman 
when he said, have, did God really say? He's trying to get her to do her own religion. And that's all religion has at its root, that you can take action. You can do things that will make you right with God. You cannot. All you can do is accept what he has done to make you right with him. And what he has done is his own son on a cross on the hill outside of Calvary called Golgotha, where Jesus Christ shed his blood for our salvation, gave up his life that we would have life. Everything else is a lie. You see, here's the problem. Moses, the prophet, do you know Moses was a prophet? Yes. He's a great prophet. Yes, yeah. He was a great prophet. He, he said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your countrymen. You shall listen to him. He's talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Moses was prophesying of Jesus. So when Moses left the camp in the wilderness, threw up the mountain to meet with the Lord, the people of God, who had just been delivered from Egypt by God's mighty hand, decided to make their own religion. Right. To do it his way instead of, to do it their way rather, instead of his way. Exodus 32 verse 1, I'm going to read that to you, right? Now when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled about Aaron and said to him, come, make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Exodus 32, 1, right? And then came the golden calf. Just like the golden calves that they would make in a time of, you know, right, up in Bethel and Gilgal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? They were making golden calves up there? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't know how yes. far that's, off that's their religion they, ended that's up. That's why they said make yes. us a golden calf. Yes, yes. they so had their, So their religion wasn't just a little bit off. It was... A, no, no, you know, a lot okay, off. Okay. you know, it's like if you're standing on the face of a sheer cliff with a 10,000 foot drop, all right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you take a running jump or take one step. Right. Bada bing, bada boom, it's you're in right. trouble. <laughs> Down you okay? Go. This is, this is, you know, this is not horseshoes or hand grenades. It's not about how you are either with him or, or against him. Amen. That's what Jesus said. You're for me or you're against me, all right? So, that which has been, think about this. This is Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9. That which has been is that which will be. And that which has been done is that which will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. False religions today are the same as false religions that started in the garden. There in the wilderness, they made an altar. They offered burnt offerings. They brought peace offerings. They sang religious songs. They had and, their festivals. And yeah. God, his anger burned against them. Go read Exodus 32. Here's the point, And please, please hear what I say. When the people of God got disconnected from the word, they created a false religion. Today, when the people of God get disconnected from the word, they will create a false religion. One that will have to choose their own way rather than the way. The false, the false way will be directed by the serpent of old who has always desired to replace God and the plan of God just as Isaiah, the contemporary of Amos, said in Isaiah 14, he said, Oh, this is God, how you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. Speaking of Satan, mm -hmm. you have been cut down to the earth, you, have, you who have weakened the nations. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. God says, nevertheless, you'll be thrust down the shoal to the recesses of the pit. There's a difference between faith and positive thinking and positive confession. There is power in God's word. You can confess your own word all the way. If it doesn't line up with God's word, brother, I'm going to tell you something. Discount the throw it away. False religions with the pretense of following Christ 
the word who made was made flesh and dwelt among us, they are cults. Yes. They're cults. And it doesn't have to be what you think of as somebody banging a tambourine on a street corner. I mean, you can be doing all the religious stuff. But if you are not receiving your salvation through the atoning work of Jesus Christ, you are involved in a cult. Salvation is the free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? You cannot. God does not desire to try, for you to try to earn your own salvation. The cost that he paid was far too high. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. False religions with the pretense that are the cults will always have their roots in doctrines and traditions of men. As Jesus said, as he called forth the words of Isaiah when he was speaking to the Pharisees and the scribes, in the, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 6 and 9, he said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. He was saying also to them, you nicely set aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. Let me say that the danger of Bethel, of Gilgal, and every other place that manifests false religion is that people will place their trust and their hope in that religion with its relics and rituals, rather than in their relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, the promised Messiah of Israel. You start to place your trust in your works. Mm -hmm. it can, remember, the first revelation of the serpent was that he was more crafty, more, sur more subtle than any other beast of the field. You can't do anything to make yourself right with God. Absolutely. You, you can do things that make you wrong with God. But all you have to do is accept his atoning work, his, his, his work with Son Receive Jesus. Receive his word. Because it is religion versus relationship that always leads to the rejection of God. I'm going to read this last, I think we're going to have to cut right after this. In Amos chapter 5, going on to verses 8 and 9, he said, He who made the Pleiades and Orion and changes deep darkness into morning. He who also darkens day into night, who calls to the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. Yahweh is his name. It is he who flashes forth with destruction upon the strong, so that destruction comes upon the fortresses. We are talking about, the, and this is what God said to this Job. He set the stars in place. You can't outdo God. You can't do what God has already done. If you have not received that free gift of God, the work, the way of Jesus Christ, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to do that. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your word, how, as it goes forth, Lord God, that we touch people's hearts and Lord, all of our hearts, Lord God, and that we would be changed. We would be a people of thanksgiving thanking you constantly and continually for the work that your son Jesus did to restore us into a right relationship with you. Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. it happened again. We're out of time. But we'll be back again next time, next week. So be with us. Please.